What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Elden Ring walkthrough. Thank you so much for tuning in. In this episode, we're going to start right here at the Castle Morn Rampart. Grace, we're going to work our way down here to this swamp and over here to this beach. And then finally to Castle Morn, we're going to go through the entire dungeon. Um, so the way this is going to work, you'll notice here on the map that this site of Grace has um, kind of the path coming from it, indicating that this is more of a story type path. This dungeon is by no means necessary, but how this is going to work is that for those of you who are just interested in the story and not any of the side stuff that we've been doing along the way, because um, this game is just chock full of content, how this is going to work is that for those episodes that contain just the story content, and as I said, I'm defining story content as content defined or content indicated by, you know, those um, the pathways uh, that are highlighted from the sites of grace. Um, and so what I'm going to do is to uh, delineate which episodes are which. I'm going to highlight the story path driven episodes with a red border on the thumbnail. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate playlist for those episodes. For, the, for those of you who are just interested in the story type levels in the game, um, I'm going to have a separate playlist just for those as well. Um, so let's see, we just picked up a uh, rune tier four. There's also some poison blossom in this section of the swamp if you want to... Uh, search for it um, in there. There's a bunch in there. Um, as I said before, those swampy areas, uh, that one that one in particular is a poisonous swamp. Um, but if you're on horseback, you're not going to take the poison damage. And of course, as uh, we've seen before, we have this this archer kind of trying to hit us from, from over there. So over here, we have a, a somber stone two and an arteria leaf. And now it's time for us to go over and take on this archer that's been, uh, been a nuisance um, since... Uh, we first got here. Um, for those of you who took on the uh, giant golem in the last episode, this is going to seem like a cakewalk. Um, I was trying to show that if you strafe back and forth, you're probably not going to get hit, but then I just got hit. But uh, even if you do get hit, I took a direct shot, not the end of the world. Um, as with the other uh, giant golems, go for the ankles with charged heavies. You don't get staggers. Well, see, this one is almost already out of HP, and we haven't even done a critical hit yet. The one we did in the last episode took probably three or four staggers before uh, we actually could kill him. Um, so this one's significantly easier. Um, and again, just be careful kind of on your way to him. Don't get shot in the face like I did with his with his great arrows. So when you arrive at Castle Morn, and there's this room off to the side with curiously nothing in it. But what we are really concerned with is this Sight of Grace. And I'm going to rest on up. And just a quick uh, gear check here. Um, since I equipped this Radagon Scar Seal in the last episode, I uh, might... I want to check to see if I have enough to equip the Turtle Shell Shield with medium load, and I do. So again, I'm equipping this shield. Um, it does have a uh, ability, the barricade shield, which greatly, I'm gonna rest just to get my FP back there, which greatly increases um, the durability of the shield and, and its blocking capabilities. But it also has the passive ability where it increases your stamina regen rate, which is a really good thing to have um, just in general. Um, stamina and, and key situations can really make or break you. Um, and another thing that I picked up in the last episode is I have my lantern that I got from the merchant. I will show you where I got the lantern from. I got it from this guy here at the isolated merchant shack. Um, I don't think I've equipped it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, put my lantern in my final open pouch slot. And what the lantern does is it gives you an extra light source, um, that you can just equip on you without having to use one of your hands to hold a torch. Um, it's not as bright as a torch, but still, it is quite nice to have. I pretty much always, when I remember, I always put on the lantern. And especially when I get into dungeons, I, I generally prefer to have the lantern equipped as opposed to carrying a torch. Um, so that lantern is really going to come in handy, especially in some of the darker dungeons. So there we go. We just picked up some stuff. Um, there are, of course, some dogs over here. They're going to be a problem if we don't take care of them. Um, because you can see on this burning mound of whatever in front of us, 
There are a number of enemies, and the last thing we want when we're trying to take all of them on is to be fighting dogs at the same time. So, again, using range to our advantage. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to approach this pile from the back. And uh, there's a bunch of smoldering butterflies in this area, too, which are great for crafting fire grease. So if you approach this area from the back, I'm just going to keep all of these from aggroing on you at the same time. As I say that, I've got, like, four of them on me, but that's okay. I've had worse. So you see this this guy with the, the, the big axe, he is considerably stronger than the others. We're going to kind of save him for last if we can, and we're going to use our special on him. Oop, got roared. All right, now he's coming after me. So I'm going to try to get some distance so I can pull off a heal here. All right. I'm going to do a special on him just to get rid of him quickly. There we go. Not too shabby. Um, if you want to use a, um, a more... Uh, a safer strat to get rid of these guys. You can obviously get them over with a bow and arrow. I was just being a little impatient there. And as you can see, being impatient got me into a little bit of a situation with those guys. But um, we survived to tell the tale. Obviously, but yes, safer way to go would be to, to, to shoot them with arrows to get them one-on-one -on -one as we did with the dogs. I uh, picked up some fire grease there. Speaking of which, we got a pumpkin head over here. These pumpkin heads are a cinch now. So he's he's actually sleeping. So I'm going to hit him with a couple jump attacks. Then a charged heavy. And he, uh, he gone. So over here. Got a smithing stone. Um, You can look over here. And this tucked away kind of in this corner. Is um, a ladder. This ladder functions as a shortcut in the level. Um, it'll skip part of it. I don't recommend taking it, though, if you want all the loot, because you're going to miss some of the loot. Take that ladder. I'll show you in just a bit where that ladder connects with the main level, so you can kind of have a visual of how this level is pieced together. Um, I call this kind of the dry run for Stormville Castle. This level is probably one-fourth to one-fifth the size. Uh, one-fifth to one-fourth the size of Stormville. Um, so it's going to... It's, it's, it's probably larger than most places we've been so far, but... Compared to what we're about to experience with Stormvale, it's it's a fraction of the size. So it's a good warm-up. There we got the Claymore. It's a pretty solid quality weapon. Um, what we have right now is better than the Claymore, in my opinion. But the Claymore did carry me through Dark Souls 1. So I do have a, a soft spot for the Claymore. So there's a war going on in this place. Between the uh, humans and these uh, beastly figures. Um... So we're going to come across a, a few spots where they're fighting each other. Um, neither of them are on our side. So if you killed all the humans, those beasts are still going to be against us. If we kill all the beasts and the humans are going to start fighting us. So nobody's on our side. So speaking of which, there's a, a battle happening here on this rooftop. But might as well speed things up because they're not doing a whole heck of a lot of damage to each other. All right, for frill calling finger remedy. There's another item over here. Steel wire torch. So this is a slightly more powerful torch um, than the one we have already. Um, unless you're really planning on attacking with your torch, which I don't ever really do. It's not really any better. It is. It it, it is. It is a bit heavier, too, so just uh, keep that in mind. Let's see, I want to clear that beacon off my map. It's going to drive me crazy. All right, so drop right over here. There's nothing at that dead end. And 
And so, whoops. So here's where that ladder comes into play. So that's where the pumpkin head was down there. And if you climbed up that ladder, this is where you'd get. So you'd miss the claymore. You'd miss some of the other things we picked up kind of along the way. But this is where uh, this is where you end up if you take that ladder from the beginning. So some of these guys have crossbows. So this is actually the progression spot. You see there's a side of grace down there. So I'm going to mark this with a beacon just to kind of keep my bearings straight. And you can drop down right over here. And then this takes you back. You see that's the beginning of the level. So just trying to help you uh, visually piece everything together. So one thing we can do before we progress um, this is very easy to miss. It's down here. There's this ladder. You can drop on down. And all the way at the end, there is an item. Oh, yeah. That, and then there's that ambush. That ambush always gets me. Don't let it get you. All right. Got another spithing stone, too. Two of them, actually. And so if you remember, uh, right before we got to the uh, Weeping Peninsula, we talked with a gal named Arena. She gave us a letter to deliver to her father. So this is actually the place where we find her father. So I'm going to drop down right here. There's another epic battle going on. There's nothing back there, so don't worry about it. So the reason why we didn't drop right away, this actually this is the very beginning of the level uh, that we were looking down on. The why we, reason we didn't drop down right away to that side of grace is because you missed that, missed this part right here, which is where our guy is. Uh, there's a face I've not seen before. I'm Edgar, the warden of this castle, as ordained by Lord Godric himself. So you can see how things have turned out. The menials have all rebelled. They gave me good service, or so I thought. But it seems it was all an act. Foul creatures, as it said. And true enough, they're foul inside and out. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But whatever you come here to do, I'm afraid Castle Morn won't hold much longer. Take this by way of apology. Okay, he gives you a sacrificial twig and we can deliver the letter. From Arena. Thank you. I mean, you're dead. But I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain to ensure the treasured sword of Morn does not fall into the wrong hands. If you see Arena, do tell her that her father will come for her once he's fulfilled his duty. Okay, so we have triggered that quest line. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to where our uh, side of grace was that we passed up and we are going to drop on down. So uh, this episode is going to be solely focused on Castle Morn. Um, so once I'm done with this dungeon, I'm pretty much going to call it there. So this might be a little bit of a shorter episode than, than most of the other episodes I've done so far. But um, I, I do want this episode to be focused on this area alone. So let's see. Can we level up? We sure can. I'm going to take my vigor up to 20. And so we're at level 33. I recommended level 30 for Stormvale. Um, so we will definitely be in good shape for Stormvale. 
And uh, in fact, I think we might even be slightly over leveled for this place. I, I I think this place is easier than Stormvale, which is why we're here first. Um, not only easier just in terms of it being a smaller level, but easier just in terms of enemy difficulty and boss difficulty. So you can make you can jump that gap and go down that hole. Um, but what I would recommend you doing is drop down right here. You see this uh, little wooden uh, balcony here. You can um, loot a stone sword key. So don't miss that. That's the only way to get that stone sword key. If you drop down first, you're going to miss it. and You won't be able to get back up there. So I suggest going for the key for sure. So in here... Get a pickled turtleneck. Please help me. I'm of noble blood. If these hideous mongrels eat me, I'll be forever marred. Anything but that, please. Think of the disgrace. Poor guy. He probably did get eaten. Hence the fact that he's a ghost. But What can you do? So these giant blobs, these are a pain to fight. They're very resistant to damage. I think they're weak to fire, but... Um, Absent having a, a, a decent fire-based weapon, those things are going to take forever. So we got another giant guy with the axe. I'm just I'm going to handle this one with jump attacks. So going up here is going to get us a talisman. The twin blade talisman, I believe. And what it does is it makes it so when you do a uh, combo... It makes it so the final hit of your combo does more damage. Kind of a random effect, but um, not something that really benefits you unless you do a full combo chain on somebody and it makes that last hit do a bit more damage. So where we go from here is we're going to drop on down to this roof. I think there's going to be there, that, that shimmering sound you hear uh, is a crimson scarab just around the corner here. Tarnished Golden Sunflower. There's the Scarab. Get some Flask. I'm, I think I'm already maxed out on my Flask, so that's not really even going to help me, but it is there in case you need it. Just follow this path on down here. Let me reach this little section. So um, the way that this works, you see these little rafters. You need to drop down to the rafters. Make sure you don't miss, because you fall all the way down. I'm pretty sure that's death. So we get a smithing stone, too, and then see this one that's, like, halfway down? You're going to make sure you want to drop on that as well. So what I do is, like, I just, I, 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 I tend to pan the camera straight up, just to make sure that if I walk straight up, I should land on that. And then take note there are enemies down here. There's a bunch of rats in here, too, so do what you will. Killing even just a couple of them will help because there's several enemies down here. Probably five. Five or so. All right, that one went out of range. Oh, he's back. Come on. Come back. Nope. Are you going to do this to me? Okay. I'm just going to drop one down. We'll be fine. Oh, you're still alive. Get the whip. So now we're almost all the way down at the bottom. So don't miss this back here. Got another side of grace. And I'll rest. Why not? And the, the, the butterflies respawn when you rest. So you could drop down here all the way across here, though. There's another enemy and another item. Actually, it's two enemies. I'm going to get this one first. I'll fight the big, the big one. Again, by jump attacks. Jump attacks are good enough to kind of cancel his attacks, chain them together, then he'll get a stagger. Don't forget the item. Some throwing daggers. You can drop on down here. There's a bunch of jellyfish, some crabs. I tend to ignore them. 
So you can see when you look at the at the ground, you see how there's kind of there's there's ground underneath me here. Right there, it falls off. It's a basically a cliff. If you walk off the edge, you're gonna fall to your death. So it's gonna be a giant crab that spawns here, but back here there's some fire arrows if you want them. killed one of his babies for a whole five runes so around this way there's another somber stone and right in front of us we have our boss door so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop my uh, flask here my physic flask we're gonna roll on in This boss, in my opinion, is considerably easier than e either of the bosses in Stormvale. We got Leonine, the Misbegotten. Jump Heavies work very well. Bloodhound's Finesse works really well. So he does move quickly and erratically. You gotta watch out for his attacks. Well-timed dodges go a long way. I'm just trying to show you his moveset so you can know what you're in for if you do this fight. So after, you know, he stabs the ground like that, he kind of leaves himself open for some hits. Uh, Bloodhounds, Finesse. Oh, I ran out of stamina. I was doing too much dodging. I couldn't do the follow-up attack. Do another one here. This should get him. All right. Yeah, he is significantly easier than, than, than the bosses at Stormvale. So get a trophy for that. We also get the Grafted Blade Greatsword. Super duper important because... We check it out. It is a legendary armament. So if you're going for all trophies, all achievements, you need all of the legendary armaments. So this is our first one to come across. On the Weeping Peninsula alone, we got a legendary Spirit Ashes for that trophy. We got the legendary armament for this trophy. This is actually a weapon that I'm relatively fond of. It takes 40 strength to use. So I plan on, in this playthrough, getting up to 40 strength so I can use this weapon. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's good in certain situations. And there is one boss in particular that I do want to use it on later in the game so i will be leveling up to use that it's a pretty cool sword i mean it's obviously it's a colossal great sword so it hits a lot harder is a lot heavier and is slower than what we're using now but um it is a very solid weapon of choice indeed so what i'm gonna do now is since we got this weapon i'm going to warp back to the beginning of castle morn and we're going to pay edgar a visit because um, we have that legendary armament now, and so that will advance his quest line. Gotta wait on the elevator, though. Always something. Okay. Ride on up. Put my lantern back on, which is why I like it to ha be in my quick pouch so I can just throw it on whenever without having to fumble through. Um, I'm going to attempt something ill-advised. I'm just going to run past everything. Because if you remember, we can take that ladder. Looks like nobody's really paying attention to me, which is nice. But we can take that ladder as a shortcut. Because if we warp to the next side of Grace in this castle, it takes us beyond where we can um, get back to Edgar. Because remember, if we, had to, we had to drop down to that side of Grace. There's no way to get back up once you drop down to it. I'm not really interested in fighting anything. So I'm not going to if I can help it. I'm not going to roll off right here. I go all the way to the end. Fortunately, some of these are preoccupied with uh, fighting the soldiers, so hopefully they'll just let me sneak on by. And here we are. I'm in your debt for keeping the sword from those fallen creatures. I'm no longer bound by duty. I'm safe. 
Rescued Arena, I will spend my remaining days with her. Thanks to you, I will be reunited with Arena and devote my remaining... Arena has a gentle nature, though. I only hope it remains intact. Thanks to you. And okay. Arena has so, if you recall, Arena was back here by the Bridge of Sacrifice side of grace so we're going to warp on back there and uh advance this quest line so as it turns out she has been killed so she's dead yeah that's that much is obvious. Okay, let's talk to Edgar. Arena. How could this be? My daughter deserved better. The fault lies with me. I chose duty over my daughter's safety. And that is how fate has answered. I'll find them. The foul wretch is responsible for this. I'll hunt them down and exterminate every last one of them. Rest assured, Arena, it will be done. I'll find a foul. I'll hunt them. Rest assured. Okay, so that is as much as we can do now. There is no way to save her. That is just how this quest shakes up. And now Edgar's ridden with guilt because he um, made a choice. And now he has to live with that choice. Uh, so anyways, we are going to go back to Roundtable Hold. Just a word to the wise. You don't have to zoom all the way out and go all the way here to get to round table hold. If you want, um, in the case of using a PlayStation, you can hit triangle to visit, to, to view your sites of grace. You see now there at the bottom, since I'm viewing my sites of grace, it says square to go to round table hold. So I can press square and it'll take me there. So all you gotta do is anytime you go there, I can just hit triangle square and it takes me right there. Um, I don't have to zoom out and move my cursor or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to D because we've done some you things to advance his quest. I take it. Then owing to our duties shared, we are now comrades in arms. I think you've earned this. The power of the Golden Order to aid the hunt of those who live in death. So now we can uh, learn incantations from him. He's got a couple for sale. I serve the Golden Order that I might put this crooked land to rights, following only the guidance of the Great Elden Ring. Those who live in death fall outside the principles of the Golden Order. Their mere existence sullies the guidance of gold, tainting its truth. And so it is the vermin must be exterminated, down to the very last. All right, so what I do now is um, I'm gonna upgrade my weapons as much as I can. Well, I took you for no matter it's lay out your arms. I'm pretty sure my Bloodhound's Fang, I don't have a tier three somber. I do not. But for my Uji Katana, I can definitely level that up. Because as I've shown, I do use it every once in a while. So I want it to be as powerful as it can be. So we got this thing up to plus five. I'm missing some somber stones or smithing stones twos to get this up even higher but what i can do is i can probably level up yep i can level up my bow so i'm going to prioritize my uji katana over my bow i'm also going to level up my um seal get it up to plus three so when i use it to heal it'll be a little bit stronger and since we have an abundance of stone sword keys at this point, let's see, you've got six of them. I'm going to go ahead and use them to open up these gates that I left. In an earlier episode. All right, so we get the uh, Krapus Black Key Crossbow and Black Key Bolts. There's another door. This one actually takes two keys to open. You see there's two heads. Each one takes a key. In 
And in here, I have an assassin's prayer book, which you can give to, um, I believe it's for sorceries. But don't quote me on that. And it's for incantations to so give it to a cleric. So you could give this, um, uh, so it's for incantations. Um, you could give it to, to brother Corin upstairs, but as I said, he's going to move around at some point. So unless you're going to buy immediately what you want, I would suggest waiting, either buying it immediately or... Um, waiting to give it to the NPC that we're going to give it to later, that I'm going to give it to later who doesn't move. I'm going to pay the merchant a visit here. So now I can buy stone sword keys. And I'm going to go ahead and pop some runes and just, just get the rest of them that she has for sale. I need 8,000 to buy them. Um,. You need another 4,000. I've got 34 tier ones. Let's see what 25 of them does. Oh, there we go. Pick up these other stone sword keys. If you're a caster, picking up this memory stone would not be a bad idea. Um, the blue cipher ring and white cipher ring are for PVPs. Um, if you're wearing the blue, if, if you use the blue cipher ring, then when people need help when they're invaded, you will summon it to their game. The white cipher ring is when you're invaded. Um, if you have, if you use this, then it'll request help from other people who are willing to help you. So, uh, let's see here. Rune arcs, those are not really useful until we get our first great rune. Um, so yeah, I think we're in good shape, guys. Um... So what I'm going to do is just head back here, and I think we're going to call it right now, guys. We got all the way through Castle Morn, um, and we closed out the entirety of the Weeping Peninsula, pretty much, except for a couple, and there's some nighttime bosses we didn't take care of and that sort of thing. So still on the fence about when I'm going to do the nighttime bosses in each area, but uh, we'll get to them at some point. Um, but the next main area that we're going to be headed is uh, Stormvale Castle. So that'll be good fun. We're finally going to tackle that area. Um, that's been kind of looming in the uh, upper corner of our map there. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope this has helped you, and I will catch you in the next one. So take care. Have a good one.